What's up YouTube, it's me again, your friendly neighborhood fish keeper, and today I wanted to talk about my top five picks in terms of cichlids for a community aquarium, peaceful cichlids for a community aquarium. Um, so all these species can be kept with plants, they can be kept with schooling fish, and they can be kept with each other. Um, and I just wanted to kind of go over my list. I have five picks, and I have a bonus pick at the end, so make sure that you stay tuned. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. So, my number five pick for cichlids for a community aquarium are actually right behind me. They are the discus cichlid, uh, Symphysodon discus. So, I'm going to talk about their temperament, their origin, their size, their tank size, their care level, and then why I chose them. So, first off, they're peaceful shoaling fish. You can see these guys behind me, they stick together, they never go apart. And if I had, you know, a group of five, they'd also stick together. And it's just really, really visually stunning. They probably breed like other cichlids. I haven't bred them yet, but I have bred a lot of very similar cichlids. And so in terms of temperament, they're peaceful except when they're spawning. Uh, their origin, they're from South America, in the Amazon River Basin, where they inhabit uh, slow flowing bodies of water. Their size, they're larger cichlids. These guys are on the smaller side. They can get about, to be about the size of your hand. Their tank size, they're gonna need a 40 gallon tall for a pair, which is what I have here. 55 gallons for a group, although 75 gallons would be better for a group, just because of this next piece, which is their care level. They're really difficult particularly to care for. They need a lot of water changes. They need a fully established aquarium. Um, they are really, really, really hard to care for. They've gotten a lot easier over time because people have bred different varieties, and so a lot of cichlids are gonna be tank bred now, but still they're gonna be a lot harder to care for than your average cichlid. So that's why they're number five on this list. Um, they have a lot of positive qualities. They are breathtakingly beautiful. I'll be sure to include some uh, videos and pictures of discus here. Uh, they come in a huge variety of colors. They're a 10 out of 10 crowd pleaser. I've had people come and look at these discus and they're blown away every single time, which always makes me feel good as a fish keeper. But they're, number, they're only number five on this list because of their required level of aquarium care. They, I do water changes on these guys probably twice a week just to be on the safer side. People recommend once a week, 50% water change. They, are, uh, they need pristine water to flourish. So that's my number five pick for uh, cichlids for a community aquarium. Next up, we're gonna go on to number four. My number four pick for cichlids for a community aquarium are gonna be the Crubensis cichlids, Pelvic Acromis, Hold Chair. Um, these guys are one of the more aggressive species on this list. Uh, so that's their temperament. They hang out near the bottom. Um, they like caves a lot, and they will hunt fry mercilessly. So if you want to breed guppies in a tank, you don't want to have these guys in them. But if you just want to keep tetras, you want to keep uh, loaches, you want to keep uh, resporas, these guys are going to be perfect. They're going to be fine. You want to keep a planted aquarium, these guys are also going to be fine. Um, they're originally from Central African freshwaters, but they're not rift lake cichlids. People I've seen keep them with you know, Malawi cichlids like I have in this tank or uh, Tanganyikan cichlids, but they're not from those lakes. They're from Central Africa. They're from like rivers and streams and lakes that are not the, the Rift Valley lakes. So you don't want to keep these guys in a Rift tank uh, if you can avoid it. Their size, they're small to medium sized cichlid, with females staying small and larger males being about medium size. For the most part, they're a smaller cichlid. Um, I've kept them and I've bred them a couple of times and they are just so much fun to breed. Uh, their tank size, they like a 20 gallon long, like this one back here, is the absolute minimum size for a pair because they can be a little bit more aggressive toward each other, but they're happier in a 33 gallon long or a 40 breeder um, because they're, again, very energetic and can be a little territorial and aggressive with each other, especially when doing courtship or when spawning. Your care level is gonna be beginner to intermediate. In terms of water quality, they're gonna be beginner. The only thing that makes them kind of an intermediate cichlid is, again, that behavior piece that, um, the fact that they can be a little aggressive toward each other if you're not careful. Uh, so you gotta make sure that you give them enough space so that they can get away from each other, enough caves so that they can hide from each other, and that can be a little higher level of fish keeping to think about that kind of stuff. So why are they on this list uh, at number four? Why aren't they higher, why aren't they lower? Well, they are really colorful cichlid with really interesting behaviors. Um, they will breed in a community aquarium, which 
you know, maybe a pro or a con, depending on what you like, what you want. I love breeding my fish in community aquariums. I think that it just like really adds to the aesthetic of the aquarium. So I love when my cichlids breed in the community, but because of that, they can be super aggressive in your community aquarium, which, you know, you might not want. And in that case, you might want to keep just a male or just a female, um, depending on, you know, what your desires are. And they're excellent parents. So if you keep a pair in a community aquarium, pretty much no matter what you have in that community, you will get fry that get that grow up to adulthood. Their cichlid fry are just, they're such good fry. And I'll talk a little bit about that later in this video. I'll talk more in depth in another video sometime. But they're good fry and they're bad fry. And these guys have some of the best fry, the, um, the Cribenza cichlids. Um, but they're low on the list because of their aggression. Um, the rest of the species on this list are not going to be nearly as aggressive as these guys And so they're going to be a little easier to keep with each other in a community aquarium. So next up We're going to go on to number three So number three on this list is the German blue ram Microgeophagus remeresi uh, The temperament here they're only aggressive with each other and once upon a time They were also aggressive with my finger when they were defending a spawn, which was really impressive. These are like fish that are maybe two knuckles long, right? The, the length of two knuckles on your finger. And yet I put my hand in the tank doing some maintenance and they just bit me and it, it didn't feel like anything because again, they're just such small fish, but that really goes to show what tenacious parents they are. Um, but despite that, they're not all that aggressive really. Um, and there's not really a predatory bone in their body. So if you are into breeding, you know, uh, guppies, platies, live bears, things like that, you would be fine keeping German blue rams in with them. Um, their origin, they're originally from South America in more tannic bodies of water, so more black water streams and things like that. And they do like tannins in their aquariums. Uh, they're a smaller cichlid, again, two knuckles long, with the males being larger, the females being smaller. Their tank size, 10 gallons, the absolute minimum for a pair, but they'd be happier in a 20 long. They really are best kept as a pair, although you could get away with just keeping a male or just keeping a female and they'd be fine too. Um, I think that they're best kept in a 55 gallon with two pairs and one will take a territory on one side and one will take one on the other side and they'll breed and they'll come in the middle and they'll fight and it's just, just absolutely magical to watch. So their care level is intermediate. They're intermediate care fish uh, and that's because of their parameters. They also need some pretty clean water not quite as hard as discus, but they are a lot harder than, you know, cribbins as cichlids, for example. Um, but why are they on this list at number three? They will readily breed, but their eggs won't hatch unless you have your water parameters exactly what they want. They like softer water. They like uh, lower pH. So if you have those parameters, they'll breed in your aquarium. The eggs might hatch, but even then, they have what I would call bad fry. So their fry are really bad at, you know, staying alive, listening to their parents. So you still wouldn't get fry unless you dedicated some time to breeding them. So um, there's that. They're absolutely gorgeous fish, which is why they're so high on this list. They're number three, not number four or number five. They're definitely crowd pleasers, I would say. Um, but they're not any higher because they can be difficult to keep as a beginner hobbyist because of that water parameter thing. Um, sometimes when you get them, if you don't, acclimate them slowly enough they will just die in the next couple of days so you have to make sure you acclimate them slowly to a fully established tank and stay up on your water changes and you'll be fine you'll get the absolute best out of this incredibly colorful beautiful fish so now on to number two so number two on this list is one of my personal favorites it's the keyhole cichlid clythrocara maronii uh, the temperament is a truly peaceful cichlid. One of the few species on this list that I would I would say is absolutely truly a peaceful cichlid, except of course when they're breeding um, or when they're trying to feed and you know getting a little defensive of their food. But again, they're not going to do any damage to any fish. They don't really have a predatory bone in their body. So you're good to keep them with guppies that you want to breed, with sore tails that you want to breed. They are an excellent community fish in that regard. They're originally from South America and rivers and streams. Um, they are a small to medium sized cichlid, small when they're younger. They can be medium sized. I've seen them in videos that are a medium size, but I haven't personally seen in real life a medium sized one. So I think that they tend to stay pretty small. Um, their tank size, they can be kept in a heavily planted 10 gallon aquarium, but they'd be happier in a 20 long and happiest in a 29 minimum once fully grown. 
they're a beginner care level cichlid they're really really hardy and why are they on this list they are I made a whole video actually about them which I'm gonna put a card on this video they are incredibly easy to care for they are in my opinion just one of the most beautiful underrated cichlids and they don't really have any cons except that they don't tend to be crowd pleasers so they are a lot of fun to keep they're beautiful they come up to the surface when you're ready to feed like it's it's I love them I absolutely love them you should check out my video I made entirely about the gill cichlid the most underrated cichlid um, yeah, great fish. So now, before we go to number one, we're going to talk a bit about some honorable mentions. All right, so now we're going to talk a bit about some honorable mentions. I'm not going to go too in-depth on these guys, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys got to see, you know, what the variety, the diversity of uh, dwarf cichlids you can keep in your aquariums, in your community aquariums, might look like. So there's Laodicara curviceps, also known as the dwarf flag acara or the dwarf flag cichlid. Really, 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 really beautiful fish. Just absolutely gorgeous. Didn't make the list because its care can be a little difficult and they're really hard to come by. Um, another fish is Nanacara anomala, also a little harder to come by, but again, just like a gorgeous fish. Not quite as pretty as the German blue ram, in my opinion, for example, but relatively easy to breed. Difficult to come by, but worth worth checking out for sure. And finally, Anomalochromis tomasi. Going to be another West African cichlid. Super aggressive uh, with each other. Not very aggressive outside of that, but because of that, they can be harder to keep in a community aquarium as well. They're also known as the dwarf, the dwarf butterfly cichlid. Um, really, really, really beautiful fish. So now, without further ado, let's get to number one fish on this list. And the number one fish on this list of cichlids to keep in a community aquarium is none other than the angelfish, Terephyllum scalaire, the king of the aquarium hobby, if you will. Its temperament won't mess with anything that isn't a fry or a tiny tetra, um, but it will absolutely mercilessly uh, eat all and any tiny fry. You cannot breed guppies in a tank with angelfish. They will not succeed. They will eat everything in sight. Um, but as long as it's bigger than a guppy fry, you should be absolutely fine keeping them with angelfish. Um, their origin, they're originally from South America in the Amazon River Basin. Um, they are a larger cichlid. They can be, get to be about the size of your hand when they're fully grown, although they do take a, like a year or two to fully reach their mature size. Uh, their tank size, 55 gallons for a pair. You want to have a 55 gallon aquarium for a pair. I've kept them in 40 gallon talls as pairs and they just are so aggressive to each other. They need more space than a tank like this can offer. Um, the discus are a lot more peaceful I've seen. Um, so I can keep discus in a 40 tall, but angelfish, they're going to need a larger footprint tank. Care level is beginner slash intermediate. So they're beginner fish when it comes to, um, their water parameters and their water quality, because they've been bred in the hobby for so long, they can handle a wide range of water parameters, but they're an intermediate fish because they just need a larger tank size. That's pretty much the only reason I have them as intermediate. Otherwise, they're beginner, but you can't keep this fish in a 20 gallon. You can't keep this fish in a 40 gallon. You need a 55 gallon minimum. Um, so that's what makes them uh, an intermediate care. Why are they the number one fish on this list? There are so many other fish that I could have chosen, but I chose the angelfish because first and foremost, they are an absolute crowd pleaser. Whenever I have people come by the house, they check out the fish tank, they say, wow, I really like these guys. The ones with the trailing fins, the ones with the really tall bodies, the ones that have this like really unique shape that like catch the light so uniquely, like they are just absolutely stunners in an aquarium. Um, great centerpiece fish. So I love them for that reason. They make great wet pets. Um, I feel like sometimes the larger cichlids like Midas and flower horns, they make great web pets. They recognize you. They come up to the aquarium and they interact with you. And then some of the smaller cichlids like keyholes, crebensis, they can be a little finicky. They can be a little skittish. They can be harder to get to interact with you in that way. Angelfish are the best of both worlds. They're good for a community aquarium, but they'll also come up to the front of the glass. They'll interact with you. They'll watch you. They know that you mean food. And so they'll come up to get some. And I really, really, really like that interactive piece. They're a lot hardier than discus, and they also come in a wide variety of colors. So even though they're not quite 
the discus cichlid, they are still in their own right a really, really pretty fish. They have a ton of different color varieties um, that you can choose from so that you can pick the one that works best for you. So that's also really cool about them. And then once you have a pair, they're relatively easy to breed. Unfortunately, you won't get fry that survive in a community aquarium because their fry are really bad fry. But uh, for the most part, they're pretty good at uh, breeding re repetitively or breeding you know, on a regular basis once you have a pair established. So that's it about the angelfish. So now, as promised, the bonus fish. So the bonus fish for today is the epistogramma group. Not quite a fish so much as a genus, but epistogramma are a group of fish that make excellent community aquarium fish. They're, I'm just gonna not go too in depth on these guys, but they uh, come in a huge variety of colors and species. They are relatively peaceful. They won't mess with plants. They won't mess with, you know, anything except for each other. Um, they're absolutely gorgeous. They can be a little harder to care for. Sometimes you need to do, you know, more water changes. They need a fully established aquarium. But I have a Pisto Borelli in this tank, a Pisto Agassiz in this tank, and then another Pisto Borelli in the uh, 75 gallon, and they are doing just absolutely well. They are doing some breeding behaviors, which I'm super excited about. And yeah, I can go through, there are three groups of, not three groups, there are different groups, different tribes of epistogramma um, that are based around body size or body shape. And so one day maybe I'll do a full in-depth video on epistogramma, but for now I'll just keep showing you guys pictures and hope that you get the gist of what it is an epistogramma and why they are such incredible fish to keep. So. Thanks for watching, tank on. Uh, thank you for sitting through this longer form video. I really like making these longer form videos um, and I hope you guys enjoy them as well. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And if you've already been around, thanks for supporting me. Thank you for continuing to watch these videos. I hope you learned something today. Um, and if you thought of anything that I could do to improve these videos, please, by all means, leave a comment below. I'm always trying to get better for you guys and for myself. So without further ado, Thanks for watching, tank on, and take care guys. I'll see you in the next video.